Hello everyone and welcome to my October wrap up. My name is Reagan and welcome to my channel. This month was a great reading month in multiple different ways. I read a lot more than I have been reading 12 books which is pretty good for me and secondly I found my first five star read of the year and yeah I know it's October. Let's just get into the books. The first book I read this month was The Play by L. Kennedy. This is the third book in the Briar You series. It follows Hunter Davenport who is the newly appointed team captain for his school's hockey team and it also follows Demi Davis who is Hunter's classmate. They're currently taking the same psychology class and they are forced to work together on a class project. During their class project they develop a friendship and it turns into a little bit more. I gave this one three stars. It took me a while to get through just because I wasn't super invested since it's been a while since I picked up the last book in the series. I've read better hockey romances. If you're looking for a hockey romance, I wouldn't necessarily point you towards this one, but it wasn't a bad read. Next, we have Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. Abby Jimenez has quickly become one of my new favorite authors. I rated this 4.25 stars. Part of Your World follows Alexis Montgomery, who is medical royalty. Her family is really well known in the medical field, and she has high expectations to meet with her career. And we also follow Daniel Grant, who is a small town carpenter slash B&B owner. Alexis's car unfortunately breaks down close to Daniel's small town. They have a one night stand and after that one night stand they develop a sort of situationship if you will and Alexis kind of discovers there's more to satisfying her parents in life and she's kind of trying to discover that throughout this book as well as develop a romance. Abby Jimenez's books are really addicting to read and this one was no different. Something I love about her books is that the issues they go through feel real. Like I didn't know how they were going to resolve the issues they were going through. Normally in like rom-coms and romance books you can kind of assume how they're gonna resolve the issues the third act conflict it made sense would happen in real life so that's why I think these books are really addicting because you don't know how the issue is going to be solved. And then I also like to throw in there that if you're gonna read this just trigger warning for abusive relationships. All right next I read a book on my kindle which was the first book in the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey. It was called The Risk. The Mindfuck series follows Logan Bennett who is an FBI agent and he is currently on Lana's case and Lana is our FMC our female main character she is a serial killer out for revenge on people and men specifically who have harmed her in the past Lana's having a hard time denying their connection she knows there's an expiration date on this relationship because eventually he's going to figure out who is the killer on all these cases so she's kind of weary of letting this relationship go too far and that's kind of what the first book's about it's really short, like I think 150 pages or something like that, and I think every single one is like that. Honestly, it was a little scary. I rated this one three stars. I am planning on finishing the series, but I don't know when timeline-wise, like I'm not in a huge rush. Next, we have Too Beautiful to Break by Tessa Bailey. This is the last book in the Romancing the Clarksons quartet. I ended up reading this two stars. We're following Sage and Belmont. This is the couple I have been most anticipating since the start of the series, and obviously I was a bit let down. We've seen their tension build throughout all of the other books. They end up in Sage's childhood small town where she's going through a lot of family issues that need to be resolved and Belmont follows her there to try and help her out but they kind of have to rebuild the relationship from the ground up just because of their situation and I didn't really like them having to start over because through the other books we were feeling all their tension build up and then you get to this one and they have to restart the relationship so you don't really feel the tension anymore. They kind of defeated the purpose of hearing about them through the other books. It was also just very very over dramatic and I think just way too much in the end. I did like how the story wrapped up though. It wasn't my favorite in the series. It was just okay. Next we have Radiant Sin by Katie Robert. This is the fourth book in the Dark Olympus series and since it is the fourth book I don't want to spoil anything for you so I am going to tell you a general synopsis. If you're interested in reading this I would start from the beginning. The first one was my favorite of them all so definitely would recommend starting from the beginning. I did read this one specifically three stars. The Dark Olympus series is set in modern day New York which kind of resembles Olympus in that there's an upper city and a lower city. I believe it's either 13 or 14 gods that run the city but they're all either like elected or it's a legacy position. A lot of different politics but we follow characters within and outside of the 13 gods. You don't have to have a super in-depth knowledge of Greek mythology to read these. It's very simple and it's set in the modern day world. This one's specifically 
typically follows Apollo and Cassandra. Apollo is one of the 13. He's kind of like a spy master. That's his job. Cassandra works for him. She is like his highest level assistant spy master early, so she's very good at her job. They've both been assigned by Zeus to go to this house party that a new socialite in Olympus is throwing. His name is Midas. As they're gathering information on Midas' family, a mystery kind of unfolds along with their romance. It started out really strong. I was really enjoying it, but as it went on, it kind of went downhill. The conflict at the end sort of got on my nerves, and I feel like the resolution was very quick. We went through this whole mystery to kind of get snappy resolution, and it wasn't the most satisfying. Cassandra, as a main character, got on my nerves because she was only really seeing things going on with herself, and she was very blind to what other people were feeling and what other people needed, even though she thought she was being considerate and aware, but she was really just being blind to everyone else. Three stars. I recommend this series. It's always really fun. Next, we have a second Abby Jimenez book, The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. I forgot to mention earlier that these do have an order you're supposed to read them in, but I did read them out of order, so I'm not sure where this one was supposed to go. If you're gonna start Abby Jimenez's books, I would recommend you read them in order. This one, I gave three stars. This is probably my least favorite Abby Jimenez book I've read so far, but still a book I would recommend. I have high expectations for her books. It was still a really good romance read. This follows Kristen and Josh Copeland. Their best friends are getting married, and they are the maid of honor and the best man. Josh is a firefighter. Kristen has her own small business, and she's looking for a new carpenter because her old one quit on her, and Josh kind of offers to help for some extra cash, along with having to do wedding activities that they have to work together as well, and they start to develop a relationship, but Kristen's keeping a secret that is stopping their relationship from growing, and you kind of explore that issue with her and how they resolve it. I was very hopeful for the beginning, but it went downhill after that for me. Kristen is one of those characters that not only really thinks about herself, I understand why she was keeping that secret, but I also feel like she was ignoring his decisions and his right to choose. This was not my favorite, but there are a few trigger warnings in this book if you'd like to read it, so I would recommend giving this a go. You might really love it. Next, I read Need Me by Tessa Bailey. This is the second book in the Broke and Beautiful Roommates trilogy, and I knew it was the second book, and I read it first anyways. I rated this three stars. I've been trying to go through Tessa Bailey's backlist recently, and it's been pretty fun. This one was fun is a good way to describe it, I think. This follows Honey Perrinbow. She has moved to New York to attend Columbia University. Honey has a crush on her English professor, Ben Dawson, and when they accidentally end up in the same friend group and also get locked in a closet together on accident, they realize that they can't really stay away from each other regardless of the rules. I'd just say it's a fun and spicy romance. Definitely if you're going into this, take it as what it is. The professor-student dynamic, while it's a little weird, it wasn't like icky and didn't make me uncomfortable, so that's good. I think it was done as correctly as it can be. It wasn't super memorable, but it was a good time while I was reading it, and it was short, so it was just a quick little palate cleanser kind of deal. Next, I read The Brothers Hawthorne by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. If you haven't heard about this coming out, I don't know where you've been. People were super excited for the series and then got pretty disappointed, and I am one of those people. I wasn't super obsessed with the Inheritance Games trilogy, but it was a fun time, so I thought I'd go ahead and try this out. I ended up reading it two stars. I can't really even tell you a summary of what happened in this book. There were two plot lines following the two different brothers, Jameson and Grayson, and it was kind of pointless could have been a novella. It was just boring. And here we are to my five star read. I made a video about this and if you'd like to go watch it, please do. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yars. I'm letting someone borrow my copy right now so I only have the dust jacket. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros is my first five star read of the year. I'm not going to give you a summary for this because if you haven't read it yet and you haven't been spoiled for it yet online, go into it blind. Best decision I ever made. It's about dragon riders. That's all you need to know. Daily, I think of this book like that's how you know it's five stars. It was so good. I thought I wasn't gonna like it because of how hyped it was. I thought it was gonna be overhyped. Thought I was gonna be disappointed. I was not. If you haven't read this yet, go do it. Iron Flame comes out on November 7th. Go do it so you can read the second book. And like I said, if you'd like a more in 
in-depth look into my thoughts on this book go watch the video i posted it was me directly after finishing fourth wing ranting about it next we have hopeless by elsie silver this is the fifth and final book in the chestnut spring series and this has been highly anticipated for a lot of people including myself i rated this four stars originally but i would probably change it to a three three and a half this is about Bo eaton and he has a very very traumatic past he got caught behind enemy lines and became a prisoner of war his hometown chestnut springs hasn't changed much but he's changed a lot and that's kind of the issue bailey jensen is chestnut springs trash her family is not very well liked around the town her and Bo strike up a deal to see if Bo can change bailey's reputation around the town by changing her last name and the fake engagement obviously turns out to not be so fake and that's kind of what this book is about it's a pretty thick one i really did binge it read this in about two sittings i wasn't super impressed but i also wasn't super disappointed i think because of like all the buzz around its release people were very disappointed honestly i was just neutral all right next we have the very secret society of irregular witches by sangu mandana i rated this three stars and this is about mika moon who is a witch and she posts like witchy videos online one day she gets a message saying witch wanted and it's like a job offer slash request to teach three young witches at nowhere house about magic after getting over her skepticism of the offer she agrees and takes the position the job is a little bit more than she bargained for she gets really attached to the children and also very attached to the hot librarian who lives at nowhere house named jamie it was very cute great for the season but nothing mind-blowing if you're looking for a halloween read i would point towards this but again it wasn't like a new favorite or anything my only real issue was i didn't feel the chemistry between the characters and it was supposed to be like a rom -com. I really enjoyed the children which is a big thing for me because normally I hate children in books and I did also really enjoy the magic system and how that was composed. And the last book of the month I read on my Kindle it was Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. It's about two journalists Iris and Roman. Iris is writing letters to her brother who is away at war and she slips them into her wardrobe. She's writing them using a magical typewriter but little does she know those letters are ending up in the hands of her rival. The two of them get sucked into the middle of a war between gods and they like find love along the way people really love this book i rated it three stars i'm now looking at it and thinking of changing it to a two i was really bored and i was just getting through it because of the fact that i had a loan at the library and i needed to get it read i didn't like how it read more of a historical fiction romance and less of fantasy romance like the fantasy aspect was barely there and that's kind of what i was in the mood for it felt like a book about war that you would read in your English class and your English professor would be like oh my god like this is so good life-changing such a good piece of literature and then you hated it because you had to read it for English it was not for me I'm a fourth wing girly not a divine rivals girly and that's okay that's everything I read in the month of October let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and let me know what your favorite read of October was and thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next one